In the previous video we mentioned that we're going to look at data binding. In order to look at data binding in the best way however, we are going to first need to create our own unique element. So in this video we're going to do just that. To create our own custom element we first need to create a new file. And I'm just going to create a file called stretchflag.html. The idea of the element is that we're going to take an input which will be a country and then we're going to display the corresponding flag. And so we're going to need the actual flags that we're going to display. Having looked around on GitHub very quickly, I've been able to identify this project, which is linked in the description, which contains flags for all of the countries identified by this user, who has taken all of the flags from Wikipedia. So we can go ahead and add that package to our project, simply by typing Bower install, and then the name of the package followed by the save flag. If we check out our bow components now, we'll see that we have access to this under country flags. And all of the different flags are saved for us. So now that we have the flags that we're going to install, I'm just going to update our main index page to point to our new elements that we're going to create. Instead of pointing at the button icon which is currently displayed, and the elements that we're creating is called stretch flag. And we will also just import the element as well. We will need to come back to this later on to actually make sure it's working properly. But this should import the element as soon as we create it. It should actually be singular, stretch flag. So we'll just change that on the element here. So this is where we're going to create our own custom element. In the same way as we've been using the paper button for example, we're going to use the stretch flag element that we're going to create just as a normal element. So the very first thing that we're going to need to do is to create a new element called DOM module. Everything inside of this is what's going to be considered part of our element. And as such we need to specify an ID for our element which is going to be the same name as the file, which is stretch flag. There is a convention that the module name should be identical to the actual name of the file. So just bear that in mind if you're creating your own. So then the next thing that we need to do is to create a template. Everything inside of this template is going to be considered part of what's going to be displayed. So for example, we could just create a paragraph tag and display this. So just to help demonstrate the fact, I'm going to actually complete this template without using the flags that we've downloaded. But we will come back to them shortly. Once we've finished working on our template, we're going to then need to register the actual element with Polymer. To do this, we need to create a script tag. Now you can do a couple of different things within the script tag. For example, you can use it to set specific behaviour for elements that we're going to create later on. But one thing that you need to do with every single element that you create is to register the element with Polymer so that it knows it exists. To do this we simply type Polymer and then as a parameter we need to pass across an object and it's in this object that we're going to pass all of the actual details. So the main detail that we need to type is is we need to specify the actual name of the elements that we're creating. So it's simply a matter of typing stretch flag here. We will come back to this later on, but for now I just want to get a very simple example working. So now that we've created our very simple element and registered it with Polymer, if we refresh our page, we should see that element displayed. And as you can see, it is. Now as it stands, the element doesn't obviously fulfil its purpose of displaying the flag for a specific country. And so we can go ahead and expand on the information within the element to actually flesh out exactly what it does and how it works. So we can see that displaying a paragraph works, but we actually want to display a picture of a flag. And so I'm going to replace this with an image. Now because we've downloaded this package using Bower, the file is going to be in Bower components again. 
and the name of the package is simply country flags. If we look into the folder itself however we'll see that we also have a PNG 250 pixels folder which is what contains all of the actual flags. So we can add in the 250 pixels folder and we can add in ae.png which is one of the files which I saw. So if we go back to our browser and hit refresh we can see that we actually have this flag displayed now. Which is obviously being displayed from our custom template. One thing you will notice however is that this flag is very much at the very edges of the element. There is no padding or margin. And so we can go ahead and add a custom style to our element which will take care of this for us. To add custom styling to our element inside of the DOM module tag we can simply we add a style tag and this is going to allow us to style things just as you would expect to style them in any other style sheet except this style sheet is inside of the element itself which makes the element a whole lot more modular so the first thing that we're going to do is add an ID onto our image which is going to call flag and then by styling the flag we can add some padding of 16 pixels. If we go back to our page and refresh again, you can see that that takes effect immediately. And if you had this element in multiple places, it would obviously take effect wherever the element was displayed. Because every instance of the element feeds from this single central copy of the element itself. Which means that styling also becomes a whole lot more modular. Now obviously not limited to just having a single element within our template, we could have multiple elements. In fact, we could add a select element which we then use to select different countries flags, such as this. So the AE flag that we've used here happens to be the flag for the United Arab Emirates. And so if we re reload the page now, we can see that having the United Arab Emirates selected in our drop down does make sense because that's the flag associated with that country. And we will build on this idea in the next video when we're talking about data binding. But for now we can just add some more styling to make this element look a bit better. So we obviously don't want the select element to be displayed to the right of the flag element. We'd be much better having it displayed below it. And so we can just specify that the display for the flag is going to be that of block. And if we refresh the page, we'll see that this moves the actual next element onto the next line. Now we obviously don't want this select element to be right up to, against the edge of the element either. And so we can add some padding to this as well. So I'm just going to add an ID here of country ID. And so we can go ahead and style this country ID. And I'm simply going to add the same amount of padding on. It was 16 pixels, but instead of padding, I'm actually going to use a margin here. And then we're also going to display this as a block. If we refresh the page now, we'll see that everything is as we would expect it to be. It's indented from the left. And it's also got the block applied, although that doesn't make any physical difference to the view that we can see. And we obviously haven't added any background element properties to this, but we can go ahead and do that now. The easiest way to do this will just be to add a div surrounding all of the elements. If you wanted to get more fancy with the CSS, you could use things like root and more complex selectors to actually style the template directly. But for our purposes, just adding a container and styling that is simply enough. And you could of course use any style that you wanted to for this. You could even make the background red for example, although this doesn't look very good. But this is the exact same principles that the Palmer team have used when they've stylized, for example, this header row. Which they've decided would most appropriately be blue. 
The red's a little bit too harsh on the screen, so we can change this to a more appropriate colour. So we'll have it a slight off-white. And if we refresh the page, you can see that that's displayed properly. Now it may even make more sense to add the padding to the actual container element itself, rather than padding each of the individual elements. So let's just move that across. We still want to keep the margin on the actual country ID. But we only want to keep it on the top and bottom now. And in fact we can change it so that it only appears on the actual top itself. And this way the actual spacing at the bottom of the element is going to be the same. While we still have the spacing between the flag and the actual select element. So as you can see the actual process of creating a stylized template specific to your exact needs isn't particularly difficult. In the next video we're going to explore how we can make it more useful however by actually binding data which will make it more dynamic. At the moment it obviously only displays one flag and one country. Whereas there are a whole host of other flags available to us and different countries available to us. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that.